we're going to solve this debate once and for all. Hub drive motor versus mid drive motor. I've got a 20,000 watt hub drive motor that peaks at 40,000 watts. I've also got a 20,000 watt mid drive motor that peaks at 40,000 watts. Which one's better? I don't think you can fit on there, Ranger. I'm going to put this 96 volt, 64 amp hour battery in that and i'm going to put this nd 96 1200 600 line amp 1200 phase controller in that exact same battery exact same controller same specs on the mid drive motor as the hub drive motor we're going to find out which is better the only issue is this bike weighs a lot more even with that super ass heavy 80 pound hub motor this mad dog only weighs 291 pounds the fake ducati or suzuki bandit when i put the battery and the controller on it it comes in at 369.8 pounds good god what a pig but you know what that's still lighter than these factory e-bikes are selling so i'm doing pretty good Got this thing in race mode. Got a 78 pound difference. I have to make up for that somehow so I can get equals to equals to see which is better. And I'm also just gonna do a rideability. I mean, I really love this hub motor so far. It's amazing. I've never drove a mid-drive motor this big. So it's gonna be an opinion comparison as well as a performance comparison. My theory is that hub drives have a bad name on the internet because they're slow. But these new hub drive motors, this one has a 1670 RPM, over 100 miles an hour. They're not slow anymore so the mid drive's got its work cut out for it i don't know if you guys are aware but florida has this new law now if you go over 100 miles an hour they put you in jail directly to jail it's crazy i never know when a cop's lurking around these corners i can usually get out of tickets pretty good but i don't want to take any chances so i'm going to move everything to a zero to 60 and eighth mile comparison i'm not real sure this bike goes a lot faster than 100 miles an hour i had it to 102 and it seemed like it was petering out pretty quick so this is my bike before I add the weight to it. That's a pretty good eighth mile time, 8.11. So I gotta weight this thing up so it's the same weight as the fake Ducati and hopefully won't break it in half. I gotta add 70. So this bike weighs 78 pounds less. I'll carry a dog. That's what I'll do. Up up here. Yeah, right on this. There you go. You sit here. No, okay, stay. I don't think you weigh enough. Okay, Ranger, you get up here. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh, you weigh too much. I forget that not only Florida's watching my video. Yeah, you guys in Colorado, the PETA fans probably would have complained about that. You try something else. Water weighs over eight pounds per gallon. Just a little bit over. So 10 gallons of water, it's about 78 pounds. I'm gonna carry that on here. Lithium battery, water, what could possibly go wrong? Well, that stupid idea is not gonna work. I can't fit that on that bike. I know what I'm gonna use. Bag of concrete, 80 pounds, that's perfect. I need 78 pounds. It weighs 82 pounds. That's still good enough. Four pound difference. That's not that much. Hell yeah. Strap that to the mad dog and see what happens. I hope my frame doesn't snap in half. That's a lot of weight. Baby, you've all seen those videos on YouTube this is with 15 guys on one scooter. I'm putting all my faith in those videos. But I hope this thing stays together. I'm not going to hit the brakes very hard, I'm going to tell you that. No brakes, no bumps. Got an 80 pound sack of concrete. I'm afraid this thing's going to break in half. Accelerating should make it lighter though. Just can't slow down. Yeah, it's definitely slower. I'm gonna slow down really slow. 8.6, not bad. So the weight didn't make that big of a difference. I thought it'd be like nine or 10 seconds. So it's not that big of a deal to add the weight. Zero to 60, 4.92, that's where you felt it. And also the zero to 30, 2.29. Those are quite a bit slower, but that eighth mile is not bad. I went from 8.11 to 8.6. Oh yeah, I've got to do a burnout test. And the Ducati burns out pretty good. I've taken all the stuff out of the Mad Dog and put in the Ducati. Same battery, same controller, mid-drive 20,000 watt motor, all the same settings except for those I had to change. AN setting of 16, RPMs of course are higher. 
It's a higher RPM motor. And then pull pairs are four now instead of 16. That's about it. Initial fill feels a little bit slower. It might be go-kart syndrome because the Mad Dog is so much smaller. And this bike is, of course, bigger and it's going to handle better. But you can see I don't even have hand grips. Now, speaking of hand grips, I need to shout out to my sponsor, AliExpress. And you can use my uh, discount code, you're screwed, and not get your parts also. So I ordered hand grips, but they never showed up. It's been two months now. They wouldn't give me a refund. I don't know. So yeah, the bike rides nice. I thought the chain was going to be a lot more noisy. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is not noisy. It's a real quiet bike, which is cool. It's just a whole different feel. It's definitely fast. It's smooth, it's quiet. I like it. It's pretty quick. Ooh. I have a feeling this thing's gonna go through some sprockets. Maybe finishing this, testing later. The sky's about to dump. Got my hand grips. I had to order those from a real bike store. I think Revzilla or something. And I also ordered some new tires while I was on there. I got these Kenda KM1s. Half the price of a Pirelli Corsa, a Dunlop Sport Max Q5. For my skill set, these Kendas will work as good as a racing slick does for a real rider. Save some money. Look how sticky they are. They got grass sticking to them. You can't beat that. Got the cool aluminum sprocket. Went ahead and 520'd this thing. Ready to go. I'm out here riding dirty. No license plate. No mirrors. No blinkers. I blew up my rear view camera. Don't know what's behind me. Gotta get another one of those. So comparing these, you might think, well, you need to do some adjustments and make that motor take off faster. But we've already got it maxed out. Remember the 0 to 60 improvement tests we did? All the settings we put in, they're still in there from the hub motor. We can't possibly make this motor take off any faster. I'm doing an eighth mile in 0 to 60 so I can leave ratios in speed completely open, 100% all the way through, just like we did with the hub motor. So we're not going to have a field weakening issue with those speeds and those RPMs. It's going to be bike versus bike. Just as suspected, this thing's pretty slow. I mean, it's fun, and it's fine to ride around like the city, like a Ninja 250, Yamaha, what is it, 300, or R3. One of these, you know, 40 to 50 horsepower bikes. They're great for the city and stuff. I do like the full-size bike. It's a lot more comfortable to ride. It's not as squirrely, not as sketchy. But the Mad Dog is definitely faster, and I weighted down the Mad Dog to make it even slower, but the truth is if I was riding the electric Mad Dog, I would not have that weight on it, so it'd be a much faster bike. I didn't compare these times yet. We'll have to stop and look at them. Let's break it down. That hub motor was actually not faster than the mid-drive. Complete go-kart syndrome. It just felt slower because the bike was bigger and handled better. The hub motor was actually slower in the 0-60 to 60 when it was weighted down. Mid-drive motor was slower by three one-hundredths of a second in the eighth mile. I doubt anyone would notice that. So I would say those eighth mile times are exactly the same. And the mid-drive beat it in the zero to 60. You can also see the 60 foot time is quicker on the mid-drive as well as a 330 foot time and a much slower top speed in the eighth mile, only 80 miles an hour. This lower top speed is a good indicator that the mid-drive motor is entering weak where back EMF is equaling EMF and we need to use field weakening to make this motor spin faster compared to the hub drive at 84 miles an hour. So technically the mid-drive beats the hub drive weight for weight. If we go and look at the hub drive with the lighter weight on it, it's still not that far off from the mid-drive. It beats it in everything of course, but not greatly. Here's the original unweighted Mad Dog 8.11 and 87 miles an hour in the eighth mile so nothing to write home about on the difference the mid drive is actually fast it just feels slow because the bike handles so much better and is so much bigger I do like the full-size bike it's a lot more comfortable to ride it's not as squirrely not as sketchy this may be go-kart syndrome because this bike's so much bigger I couldn't even jump that hump 
Yeah, it won't do wheelies. So here's another problem with these electric bikes. Now, of course, I'm not sure this would be a problem if I spent $10,000 and got a Stark Varg or a live wire, something or another. When you're on an underpowered bike to do wheelies, you really need to clutch. With the gas bike, your engine's already spinning. When the thing's running, the bike is spinning. This bike is not, the engine's not spinning. It doesn't spin till you take off. With the gas bike, that engine's already running at like 800 RPM. And when you go to take off, you might bring it to 12, 13, 1400 RPM when you're releasing the clutch. That motor's already going. You've already got an advantage over the electric bike. I'm not sure if they make clutches for electric bikes, but I'm thinking I'm going to research it. I don't know how to stick a dry clutch between that motor, because I think that's what I don't like about this bike is no clutch. It's underpowered, and I'm fine with that. I don't mind riding an underpowered bike. I like those little uh, ninjas, those little 400 CBRs and things like that. I enjoy them, but I got no problem wheeling them or taking off fast on them because I can use the clutch. You can set the RPM of your engine right there at the peak where you're making all 50 horsepower. Then you can feather that clutch out and control how much of that power you want to put to the rear wheel. And that's a nice feature. This electric bike, you don't have that. I think this bike would have to have a lot bigger motor or a lot more power to make me happy. It started petering out about 85, 87 miles an hour, somewhere in that range. It felt about like the hub motor did at 100 miles an hour. I've slow mowed the runs down and put them side by side. And I think the mid drive may have more potential than the hub if I can figure out how to tune it. Right away, the hub motor draws 697 phase amps, while the mid drive motor is only drawing 171 phase amps. The hub motor is at 8,500 kilowatts, while the mid drive is still at 1,000 kilowatts. Huge difference. They both start off at 106 point something volts. They're both dropping volts at about the same rate. We're at 99 volts now. The hub motor is putting out 33,000 watts, and the mid drive is 31,000 watts, so they've about caught each other. And it looks like line amps are 342 versus 316. Phase amps are 636 on the hub and 638 on the mid. So they seem to catch each other right about here. And that speed is 35 miles an hour where they kind of equal each other. And they run pretty equal all the way to about 60 miles an hour. A thousand RPM on the hub. And then the hub starts getting ahead of it. The hub motor starts putting out more kilowatts. Its line amps go higher. The phase amps are higher too. Then the mid drive motor peaks at about 50,000 kilowatts. But the hub motor just keeps going and passes it at about 70 miles an hour. It's 56,000 kilowatts. The mid-drive motor is now slowing back down to 40-something thousand kilowatts. By 75 miles an hour, the mid-drive motor, the weak light comes on. Back electromotive force is now equal to electromotive force. We need field weakening to spin this motor faster, and it's fading out. The hub-drive motor, meanwhile, just keeps on trucking. So I think the mid-drive motor could be faster than the hub-drive motor if I tuned it properly. Same tune, this hub-drive motor is faster and top speed. I think I need to play with field weakening to get this mid-drive motor to outrun that hub-drive motor. I think it can be done. So I'm sure that's where I need to kick in field weakening, but for this test I didn't want to do that. So that will give me something to play with, is trying to field weaken this thing to go faster. But the hub motor requires no field weakening to go that fast. I went 102 on the hub motor with zero field weakening. Everything 100%. Let me summarize this test. They were tuned for zero to 60 on the controller, and that's it. No field weakening. It was at the disadvantage of the mid drive. It didn't really matter on the hub drive. That's such a high RPM motor. It was never even getting too weak in the eighth of a mile. This one was. But the mid drive motor, surprisingly, was quicker zero to 60 when they were weighted equally and it was the same quickness in one eighth mile it just had a slower top speed which i think we can play with the ratios in speed and work that out as far as rideability of course this full-size bike rides way better I just don't like riding a bike with only this much power with no clutch. Kind of takes away the whole fun factor. This bike's really fun because I obviously wouldn't have it weighted down. You don't really need a clutch. You can just give it the throttle and it will burn out. This one here, I got to hold some front brake to get it to burn out. Tough call. I guess I like them both.